All right, people. Here it is. Here is the October question mark ban list for TCG final discussion. As we know, we have no fucking idea when we're going to get another ban list, you know? For all we know, we might get an, the next ban list in October of 2033, <laughs> you know? For, it's just Konami, like, your bullshit fucking excuse. Everybody was fucking under hand, like, oh, okay, I understand. No, fuck you, Konami. Give us our list. Get a fucking set schedule, you know? How, how would you guys fucking feel if I felt like, well, I kind of felt like I can't bring you guys the quality videos because I feel pressured that I'm on a time schedule. So instead of being on a set schedule like I usually am, I'm just going to give you guys a video whenever. No, that sounds fucking retarded. You know, that sounds fucking retarded. But hey, that's what Konami did. So when we get our fucking uh, list, who fucking knows? But, you know, I'm going to be taking a break after this. And I was like, you know what, screw it. Lots of people are going to go ahead and do an October list because they're assuming that the list is going to be October. I mean, it has been three months since our last list, but Konami didn't say that we're doing the three months list. You know, they're the ones that fucking decided that they're going to do the three months list. Then they felt pressured that they were going to do that shit. It's like, like, it's your fault that you're feeling pressured. And I'm like, I'm the fucking one to fucking talk. Like, I'm the one that set my own schedule and then I'm like, God damn, this is too much work. But at least I accept that the fact that it's my goddamn fault. But, I don't know. Anyway, I don't want this video to be too long. So instead of uh, taking multiple parts and referencing everybody, uh, I got all your suggestions, you know. I literally took everybody's what they think and put it into one big old thing. And I'm just literally going to talk about every card so I don't be redundant as hell. And be like, alright, well, you know, everybody thinks that Real Magical Ever should be and keep on referencing them. So I'm just going to go down this list, uh, give my two cents about each card, and hopefully maybe this video will be 20, 25 minutes. Anyway. Let's go ahead and start. So starting it off, we're going to go with the ban. So Royal Magical Library. All right. As we know, that's a super problem card. It's an annoying card. It's a Saki card. But when you really sit down and think about it, and keep in, and keep in mind, we're also looking through the eyes of Konami. Has it been a problem card? Absolutely not. You know, uh, we what we see the occasional Saki with the chicken game or, you know, in the Ignites. But have we really seen it enough of a problem for Konami to warrant hitting it? No. And that sucks. It sucks that it's just going to skid by in another list being unwarranted. But, you know, you really can't put it in the same boat as, like, you know, uh, you know, the Jin and the Wild Chain and that plan the Jin Lock. No, absolutely not. So, you know, don't be surprised if Royal Magical Library doesn't get banned and nothing along that because Chicken Game was, you know, more of a Saki thing, if anything. Alright, moving on, we have Ptolemyos. All right, well, I know OCG banned it, but we don't have the same problems over here in the TCG. I mean, the most you're going to do is what? Ptolemyos, Detach 3, turn into a Pleiades. Ooh, with one material. Ooh, like, no, no, no. Ptolemyos is fine. As long as we don't get Infinity, that, you know, that will, it won't be a problem. And if we do get Infinity, please, ban Infinity, all right? OCG, you're fucking retarded. You ban Ptolemyos because it makes Infinity, and then you literally create your fucking Soul Shade, which can go Infinity, and then you create your fucking, your Machine Pendulum Level 5 deck, which can create Infinity, and it's just like, you, you just want every other way to create Infinity, but you're just getting, you know? There's multiple roads to fucking hell, but you're just gonna break one road, but there's still other roads to go to hell when you have the opportunity to destroy hell itself, like, whatever. So, yeah, Ptolemyos. Next, we're going to go ahead and talk about Norden. All right, Norden and the Institution, that's probably the biggest thing. You know, that's probably the biggest thing. If there's anything that we want to address on this upcoming list, it's got to be that, you know. Even with Necros being Necros, everybody's pointing a finger and looking at Norden and being like, what's up? And the thing is, is that it's another engine. That's the big problem. This is, we haven't had this much controversy between two cards that synergize so well since Sanctum and Moral Talk. You know, it's just like they both contribute, you know, Instafusion and both Norden both contribute. And you could hit one or the other, but in the end of the day, they're both still there, you know. Uh, so... OCG banning Norden was actually a really great choice because, as you know, Norden is a super enabler. You know, you really can't look at it and be like, oh, it's just a wolf bark. It's just a wolf. No, no, no. It, it, and I know it's like, oh, well, if they get their own wolf bark, then how come everybody can't have it? The problem with it is that it doesn't cost you a normal summon. It gives you an additional play, an additional access to play when you burn through your resources because it doesn't cost you your normal summon. It resets Clown. It... It allows almost anybody to access to Trish. Like that that that's one of the amazing things too, you know. We're all like, oh my god, Trish was so Trish is so good. Trish is so busted. It's been banned for fucking rare. Well, at least that it's hard to it's at least it's difficult to summon. So you know that's fair. Um Insta Fusion Norden, Norden summon level four, summon effect veiler. Nope. There's Trish. 
God damn. God fucking damn. So, no, 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 no. Uh, I would love Northern to be banned. If, if, if there's any, if there's literally any card that I want to see banned, it'd be Northern. Because I, I would agree with OCG. It's just stupid. It should have never been made. And, you know, they want to come over here and cash it. Uh, like I said, there's a thin line between breaking the game and Konami wants to make money. You know. <coughs> of course, we don't know when we're going to get the list. For all we know, we're going to get the list in November, December. We don't know. So, uh... To address Norton is correct, but that's only to assume that, you know, Konami doesn't want to, you know, sell more tents and stuff like that. But, you know, without a set uh, date for when uh, we know Konami's going to go ahead and put the list, for all we know, we don't know. So that's that's the thing. We're, we're a complete blank, you know. For all we know, fucking Konami is like, oh, you know, we're not going to do the list on October 1st. Because, yeah, we know Norton needs to be addressed and we know that institution and all that needs to be addressed. But, you see, we want to sell a couple more tens. And while we gave you the whole <coughs> BS shit about, you know, it takes us time to decide. It's just we want to go ahead and sell our product a little bit more before we go ahead and address it, you know. So, uh or we'll just go ahead and assume that they have sold their Norton, they have sold their tens. We're good. Let's go ahead and address the problem. Uh, Nor banning Norton is actually a good choice, but maybe they want to go ahead and take it a little bit slow. Um, now, as De Sigma said, has Institution been a problem before Norton? Not really. Not really. Uh, it's a very powerful card. You know, being able to pay a thousand to summon additional monsters to do additional plays, it's literally what Trip Clown does, essentially. But with Norton, it just adds a whole new fucking just shit to it. So definitely, I could probably see Institution going down to one. Uh, with one Institution, you can have three Nordens all you fucking want, but, you know, you're only using the Institution play one. Uh, with putting Norden down to one, you still have multiple Institutions, and while it's not really in your play, you know, why not go ahead and splash in the other Institution? Norden only needs to be special summon, go ahead and play a little bit of Revival and loop it. So, if I was going to point any Infusions, uh, point any fingers, I'd either say, if you don't want to completely and utterly kill the fucking Saki shit, Institution one, everybody gets one Noden, Institution one, and if you want to continue playing the more Nodens, you know, play shit like fucking Re... Synchro, I mean, well, Resynchro, Refusion, and Call of the Haunted Oasis, which is still psyche, but, you know, it's not as consistent. Uh, or Ban Norton. I don't care, either one. Oh, Alright, we're already seven minutes into this fucking video. Holy shit, time is going by fast. Alright, anyway, next, Regeki. Yeah, I, I, I would love to see Regeki banned. You know, how many fucking games have been stolen by just Regeki, Regeki, Regeki? Uh, of course, uh, it's banned in the OCD, it got banned in ARG, so... You know, maybe Konami is, like, looking at them and, like, you know what, this is dumb, you know. Like, it, it, there has to be some risk versus reward, you know. There's a ton of people who are like, oh, yeah, you know, Pot of Greed is fair. Like, no, it's not fair because there's no risk to it. And the same thing with Regeki. No, it's not fair. Yeah, sure, everybody can play Regeki. But literally being able to just throw, play one card and just wipe your opponent's field and either, you know, come back into the duel that way. There's got to be a risk to it. And when I say a risk to it, Dark Hole, you know. Like I said, I would... To be totally fine if Regeki was banned in Dark Hole 1 up to 3. Because, you know, you want to go ahead and play multiple destruction, that's fine. But there's got to be some risk to it, you know. And when you really look at it, you know, OCG, they have they have Dark Hole, but they have 3 Torrentals. So 4, and that's crazy too. Like, Torrentals is the strongest of them. So 4 destruction cards. We have uh, 2 Dark Holes, a Torrental, and a Regeki. 4 destruction, Master Shock cards. So, like I said, I would be totally fine with banning Regeki, banning Dark Hole 3. We have 3 Dark Holes, 1 Torrental. Because, seriously... Even with Toronto, it's more arguably the most powerful, but at least, like I said, it still has that risk factor where you got to turn to your shit too. So, uh, I would not be uh, upset or even remiss if Regeki got banned. Anyway, moving on, Chicken Race. Alright, um, like I said, it's the same thing with Potomites. Chicken Race, or Chicken Game, is not even a bad fucking card. It's actually a, a piece of shit card. I realized that. At first, I was like, oh my god, the card is so fucking good. And I was like, wait a minute. Because, you know, being able to play and draw a card, doesn't draw a card, oh yeah, but then your opponent's going to do it too. Yeah, never let your opponent draw. So essentially, you play it, you pay a thousand, you draw, and then your opponent's gonna pay a thousand and draw. You have essentially one day of peace. So, no. Like, Chicken Game is fine, the Moral Magic Library is fine, the whole deck is fine, you know. If it caused a lot more problems, then I could see where you're coming from, but it really didn't. It didn't do shit. Like, it literally did fucking nothing. You know, I've seen it occasionally in some regionals, but it didn't top fucking one. So Konami's not gonna address it. It's not even on their radar. Moving on, someone said Dante. Come on, man, really? You know, do Burning Mist deserve to be hit? Yes. Do they deserve to be killed? No. So, moving on. Uh, towers. Uh, eh, eh. Uh, Tower Turbo has definitely been stepped away from. Uh, 
you know, people realize that it's not worth the risk. It's not worth the risk. And um, it was it was more of a fad, if anything. It was literally just a little bit better version of Chicken Game, where it's a fad. You know, can it get you? Yeah. But, you know, with easy access to Diamond Crab King and with all the very aggressive decks being had access to it, Queens have literally stepped away from it. You know, it's been a cool minute since I've seen a Tower Turbo deck top. Now, are the, are, with uh, how consistent Queens are, uh, could they pull off first turn towers? Yeah, but it's not Tower Turbo. They're not committing to the entire deck. Uh, you know, it just seems like uh, Tower is kind of like that obsolete boss monster that you really can't point the fingers at. And as a Kui player, I wouldn't, I'm not the one pointing the uh, finger at Tower. I'm pointing my finger at something else, but I'll go into more detail about that with other cards. Uh, anyway, moving on, Card Safe Return. No, no, no. Card Safe Return literally rewards you from summoning from the Graveyard, which there's a lot of that in Yu-Gi-Oh! And literally extending your plays for extending your plays. Like, no, Card Safe Return was broken back then, it is broken now, and it should stay banned. End of story. And last card, Vanity's Emptiness. Uh, I'm not hating on Vanity's Emptiness, you know? Uh, there's a risk or reward factor. Is it a powerful card? Yes. But that risk or reward factor actually makes it a balanced card that's worthy of it being one of those traps at one, you know? And sure, it kind of sucks when your opponent's set up and it lost you out, but, uh, you know, when the, the card it doesn't have a bias like that, you know? It's not like the card says, you know, lock your opponent in a special summoning. And, uh, Literally, I was at first. I was like, you know, yeah, Granny should be banned, but at this point, it's fine at one. You know, it's as balanced as you can get as a card like that. So, man, is just fine at one. You know, I know ARG banned it, but you know, there are a bunch of little salty little motherfuckers who sit in a room crowded around a table and fucking try to jerk off their own list. So, no, get that communist shit out of here. So, literally, those are the cards that people want to address that are either currently banned or think that should be banned. Moving on to limited. Uh, I'm going to try to be a little bit more liberal. I'm going to try to be in the head of Konami, so let's go ahead and do this. All right, starting off with Sand again. Uh, I doubt it. It just seems like at this point, they if they wanted to unban Sand again, they would have done it. And uh, I think Sand again is probably just banned just because of their cards. You know, their, their uh, you know, shared ride and all that shit and uh, mistaken arrest. They're just like, hey, Sand again's on it. Let's just go ahead and keep him banned. Could he come off banned? Yeah, probably. Uh, probably at one, but will he? I doubt it. I doubt, at this point, I seriously doubt it. Uh, moving on, Witch of Black Forest. Witch of Black Forest is even worse than Sangan, so if they're not going to bring back Sangan, why the fuck would they bring back Witch of the Black Forest? Uh, someone said Royal Magical Library Limited. Uh, no, you know, it has to be banned. See, the problem with Royal Magical Library is that you only need one, and with how consistent decks that are running Royal Magical Library is, that's what they'll do. Alright, we put Royal Magical Library down to one. Alright, well, I'll just replace those two missing Royal Magical Libraries with, uh, Summoner Monk. So I had three Royal Magical Libraries because I literally just, I'm running butt kind of spells anyway. So some of pinch, some of Magical Library, here we go. You know, up on the fucking Saki train. So no. Royal uh, Magical Library, it's, it's either who cares about, who gives a shit about it, which is at the point right now, or it's going to be banned. And, you know, it hasn't reached that threshold like we thought. You know, we were kind of panicking. We thought it was fucking 2012 and ended up not being anything. So uh, next law will chain. I doubt it. You know, at this point, Konami is like, you know what? Foolish. That's a very powerful card. It's worthy to be at one. Uh, you know, Mathematician, to an extent, you know, like I said, at, at, at its peak of its popularity, I'm actually surprised that Mathematician didn't get hit for the TCG, did get hit for the, for the LCG, of course. Uh, and what's the level 10 is literally just a foolish, one of the most powerful cards, at, limited at one, except you always have access to it. And it's a rank four. Like, if it wasn't a rank four, we probably wouldn't be talking about this, but yeah. Uh, you know, I would love to have a level chain. I would be ecstatic if it came back just from my Uval deck. But I see where you're coming from. I see it's enabler, and definitely it's, it's earned its spot to be banned. It definitely has. Uh, moving on, Institution 1, I already talked about that. Yes, inst I, in my opinion, if we're not going to just absolutely kill the whole Norden engine, Institution should be at 1, you know? Because you want to go ahead and go Institution, summon back your clown. That's powerful, but it takes a little bit of setup, and with one Instafusion, of course, in your deck, you know. Because we can go ahead and, you know, put Norden down to one, but you still have three Instafusions. And to, I would, tell personally, I would totally go ahead, and with how powerful rank fours are, literally just run, all right, one Norden, and then, like, two other random level four fusions, run three Instafusions just to keep the consistency up, and just drop rank fours on your butt. So, you know, lower the consistency of the card in the deck, you know. Uh, just like previously when it came to the Artifact Engine, hit the Enabler not the uh, core of the system. So, there you go. Alright, so Institution, Norden, like I already talked about that. Free Money Gastratos, uh, personally, I don't care. You know, 
uh, I just don't like what heroes have become. I don't like deck wall deck. You know, I I used to respect heroes. You know, used to be a very aggressive deck where you know with the powerful XC warriors and the miracle fusions. Now you're literally just turned into a helmet deck. You know, you used to be kind of like a like her heretics, and now you've turned into fucking bujins. Like, and I'm not a big fan of that. And <clears throat> With the unbanning of Stratos, my question is, what would you what would you do with it? You would literally probably just splash it in your freaking uh, Denklaw deck and just have it be a nor another searcher for uh, Shadow Mist. Like, ooh, you know? Uh, if they want to go ahead and unban it, sure. If they don't, I don't care. But, nah, nah, to say the least. Because you're, you're probably just going to stick with Denklaw in the deck anyway. Anyway, moving on, let's go ahead and talk about Shadows a little bit. Uh, a lot of people pretty much said the same exact thing, so... Uh, El Shadal Construct, I definitely think, should be down, going down to one. Construct is the problem card. If there's any card to go ahead and point at it in is Construct. And multiple Constructs is dumb. Uh, another card that people are looking at is El Shadal Fusion. Uh, personally, I think El Shadal Fusion can stay at three. Or, or, or at most, go down to two. <coughs> because with one Construct, we don't have to worry about the multiple OTKs. Because that's what you're worried about. When it comes to El Shadal Fusion, you're worried about getting OTK because Construct, Attack, Go ahead and fuse with Construct into another Construct attack. But with one Construct, you can't do that, you know? So if you want to go ahead and fuse in Construct, more power to you. But you can't go Construct into Construct into Construct into Construct. Like I said, Construct is the problem. Construct is the core of the deck, that, and it's definitely deserving to go to one. My problem with hitting El Shaw Fusion down to one is that you're lowering the consistency of deck, where you already have one Construct, but now you're lowering the consistency of Fusions, and of course, as we know, Shadows don't do much without their Fusions. So, uh, like I said... I wouldn't mind fusion El Shaw Fusion staying at three, going down to two at the most, with with one construct. One construct. So, uh, yeah, there we go. And that's literally all I have to say about Shadows. Um, moving on, let's go ahead and talk about Necros. Pretty much pretty much everybody had the same exact idea. Uh, let's just go ahead and just do the OCG hits. Of course, OCG did TCG hits. So, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if we just even out and pretty much have like a similar uh, system to how it is at World. So, starting off, Unicorn 1. Definitely, if you're going to point any fucking finger at any fucking card in Necros, it's got to be Unicorn. Unicorn is just uh, too versatile, you know. Whether it be go ahead and send being that freaking Herald and getting a search, or it being uh, pitching to get a Necros card back from the graveyard, or just being that level 4 monster that negates extract monsters. Uh, Unicorn is literally um, just one of the best Necros and definitely worthy of being at 1. Uh, Brio, Brio as well. Uh, Brio is one at one in the OCG and definitely deserves to be put at one just because of the multiple Brio, 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 Unicorn, Brio, Brio. So lowering the consistency of uh, Necro's deck is definitely the way to go. Uh, Necro Cycle, uh, OCG has that as well. Uh, that's a very powerful card, you know, being able to go ahead and uh, tribute to summon, pretty much be like a monster reborn ritual summon out of the graveyard is pretty powerful. And uh, really, all of the mirrors are really kind of versatile in their own ways. Uh, whether it be Kaleido, regular mirror being able to banish to summon, or Cycle being able to summon from the graveyard, but you still got a tribute. Uh, I see where you're coming from. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about Cycle. I mean, besides just set precedence on OCG, it just seems like Cycle is no worse than any of the other mirrors, personally. I've, I've dueled Necros a couple of times. Uh, like I said, they're all bad in their own ways. So to point, you know, a, a finger at ne Cycle and be like, you're the best of the one, because I could be like, you know, I kind of think regular Mirror is the best of the one, being able to go ahead and banish the summon. Like, holy shit, that's good. And oh my god, Kaleido being from your extra deck? Like, ooh, that's good too. So if anything, they all deserve to have a finger pointed at them. But, you know, besides just to set precedence with Cycle, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Next, moving on, Wavering Eyes. Wavering Eyes is a fine card. Wavering Eyes is a balanced card. There's nothing wrong with Wavering Eyes. It's actually a pretty good and skilled card when it comes to, like, a Pendulum-based deck mirror match. The only problem is, is that it's used in Cleats and Tower Turbo and such. Uh, you know, Tower Turbo is whole, like, oh, set my scales to Wavering Eyes and get my scout. That wouldn't be a thing if Scout didn't plus you off of resources as well. So, definitely pointing a finger at Wavering Eyes isn't the problem card. Wavering Eyes is not bad. It just increased Cleats and consistency a little bit, but... With the card I'm going to go ahead and say, and keep in mind, I am a Klee player, I think that's actually a better choice. So, Wavering Eyes can stay at 3. Uh, moving on a little bit, uh, we have Sir, Malbranch of the Burning Abyss. Uh, definitely, the Sir is probably one that we're all saying. Uh, going ahead and going, Sir, 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 Dante, Sir, 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 Dante, Sir, Sir, Dante. Uh, that's probably one of the dumb things, of course, in Burning Abyss, where, where you just, you know, you have Sir, and Sir will summon you back to Dante, and Dante will grab you back to Sir, and Sir will grab you back to Dante. So, by lowering the consistency of Sir, definitely. Uh, uh, ARG, of course, hit Sir down to one, and I uh, personally think that, uh, you know, TCG stepping away from Burning Abyss and letting OCG take it over is actually a correct choice. So, if any list is going to hit Burning Abyss, it would, of course, be this one. And I definitely think that Sir going down to one is a correct choice. All right, let's go ahead and uh, deal with the big one here. Uh, 
So tell us. You won Worlds. I mean, simple as that. And, you know, there's a handful of people who are like, well, I don't think they're going to hit. No, they're going to get hit. There's no doubt about it. There's no fucking doubt in my mind. It's li- they, they literally hit the deck that's won Worlds for the last at least seven, eight years. It's precedent. Sorry, you know. And it sucks. I was really hoping that Necros would win just so we could just murder that deck. But, you know, Telling Knights won. Like, fuck you, Yusuke. It's like, fuck, why? So, yep, Tell Knights are probably going to get the D. So, the question is, how are they going to get the D? Let's go ahead and start off with the obvious one. Trevor's probably going to go down to one. Uh, Trevor is uh, obviously the enabler of the deck, being able to go ahead and just be like, oh, put everything back. Like, you know, uh, freaking just a trap. No, not a trap. Dish, a giant true nade for freaking just everything. It's just like, oh, come on. You know, resetting them, uh, Fiendish Chains, them Oasis, and Call of the Haunts is just one of the key ways that make Tower Knight so good and able to uh, recycle their resources. So definitely, uh, Triv is going to go down the one. You only get one Triv. Uh, next, there's uh, pretty much a branching path, you know. A couple of people say Altair to one, a couple of people say Deneb to one, a couple of people say Rhoda back down to one. And uh, it really depends. You know, if you put Altair down to one, the deck is essentially dead because uh, that's a one way to kill it. And while people think, oh my god, you know, generally when it comes to worlds, the deck gets killed, it doesn't get killed, it just gets ne- neutered to the point where you don't want to play it anymore. You know, our freaking, uh, you know, Inferno is dead? No, definitely not. They wanted to kill you, they could have freaking banned Archfiend, but they didn't. They still left you an Archfiend. And that would be the same point, you know. Uh, you can go Altair Deneb, Deneb's going to search for what, you know. And while they want to eliminate the deck to the point where it's not competitive to the point anymore, uh, Altair would kill the deck, and that's not the correct choice. So what the correct choice would be is definitely lowering the deck's consistency and uh, hitting Deneb down to one. I think Deneb down to one would be a correct choice, where you only have one Deneb, that is it. You have one Deneb, and if it gets uh, frickin' uh, Rhapsody, oh fucking well, you know, it's kind of like in Zector. So I'm definitely in agreement that Deneb's going down to one. Uh, now the other enabler, Rhoda, and that's a, and, that, and that's a, that's a tough one because uh, is Konami earning any money off of anything warrior related? Definitely not. But uh, when it comes to Rhoda and when it comes to how Konami's been as of late, they really haven't been very fond of hitting broad searchers and actually been stepping away from it. You know, at this point, everybody has they're all their searchers. Everybody, you know, whether it be Tenki or Rhoda or anything, they're all up. So I'm probably not going to go ahead and point the finger at Rhoda. But there is actually one card that no one actually thought of that I'm actually going to go ahead and point the figure at. And this is left field. I know you're probably going to be like, what the fuck? I'm going to have to say, we're nuclear high. Because even if we put the Neb down to one, what are you going to do? You're still going to run your multiple nuclear highs, and nuclear high is going to get your Neb set up. A nuclear high is essentially in the same boat with Foolish and Mathematician where, yes, uh... It's sending. It's it's literally sending. And sending that Deneb is very powerful as an 18 beater. He's, he definitely uh, solidified his place in a Telenite deck. So, by completely lowering the consistency, you can keep your 3 rattle because everybody uses the warrior based deck. But Deneb's going to go down. I think Deneb's going to go down one. Trip's going to go down to one. And Anuk's going to go down to one. And that's going to completely lower the consistency of uh, Telenite. I also think that, you know, with the popularity, popularity and the possible chance of, you know, revitalizing and restructuring, I also think that Mathematician is actually going to. This is. This this is, this is the time that Mathematician should go down, because this, not only is it being an enabler for Shadals, but it's also being an enabler for Burning Abyss, which, of course, that's a great way to go ahead and address the uh, Burning Abyss, but also what Telenites will become. So, Mathematician, you deserve your hit. You definitely, you know, if Foolish is at one and the Lawless Chain is banned, you're next. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, go ahead and talk about this card, because as a Klee player, uh, this is what I think. I think, and as a Klee player, I think Scout should go down to one. Uh, see, the problem with it is that the, still, the consistency is too high. You know, the scout to Klee ratio is too high. And that's the reason why we're having such a problem with Tower Turbo and Wavering Eyes and stuff like that. You know, uh, with one scout, they really wouldn't do those risky plays such as, you know, you know, Wavering Eyes and destroying my skill and getting my continuous play and start. Pretty much by scout at one, wave, uh, Tower Turbo would be dead. They wouldn't risk destroying that one single scout because that's the only scout they had, you know. And... Think about it, you know, the, you can go ahead and waver knives as much as you want, but unless you've got the scout, you're kind of negging. And uh, it's questionable whether that Cleve plays players would still even play the waver knives with only one scout because it would just be a risky play because there's a chance you're not even grabbing the, the uh, scout, you know. You can go scout, play your other scale, you got that ready, that uh, waver knives on fleek because you know you, that you're going to go ahead and waver knives and then just grab another scout and you're still going to be okay. But with only one scout, you know, the plays are risky, uh, you know. With, like I said, with broad searcher cards such as uh, Summoner's Art, Konami doesn't seem like they're doing that. You know, 
Uh, Wavering Eyes is a fine card, so literally the only card to point a finger at is Scout. Uh, now, personally, as a Klee player, uh, I would I wouldn't mind stepping away from Scout. I mean, it, I would personally I would like to go ahead, and if I was if I was up to Konami, it's my decision. I would probably put Scout down to one, but I would put Sacrifice up to two just to give them more vers more versatility through those plays. You know, uh, the only reason why. Um, you know, uh, sacrifice was completely out of the wall busted. Is because when it's sent to graveyard, you get to search for a clean monster, i.e., being scout. But with only one scout, I mean, it increases the consistency a little bit. But some uh, sacrifice doesn't increase the odds of tower turbo, but it will increase a little bit of defensive clean plays that will allow them to play. Yeah, and if need be, I totally wouldn't mind just completely flipping Klee's on their head and just being like, all right, scout ban, but you have sac all three sacrifices, so they would literally just turn into a tribute-based deck with pendulum mechanics, but no scout. Anyway, moving on, lose one turn, lose one, lose a turn, lose one turn, whatever. It actually hasn't been that terrible of a card. You know, it hasn't been as uh you know uh on the spot as usual, and uh, it's pretty much was kind of like skill drains replacement you know, when you really think about it. Um, I mean, you're probably not going to listen to what I say because I'm a clue player, but it hasn't been that bad, you know. Uh, to put it at even lower or move it at all would be an understatement just because it really hasn't even been much on the radar. Uh, but if they want to, I mean, it's it's, it's hard to place, you know. Uh, most clue players probably play it at, I'd say, 2, and that's, you know, being decent with it. You know, if they want to go ahead and put it down to 1, I mean, I guess, but I really can't put it lose one lose a turn in the same boat as cards like skill drain and vanity I, I mean i just don't see it you know it just seems like it's the more balanced version of it so i mean you could put it at two but they only play at two but it's not a terrible semi limit so I can, if you want to put it at two i can see where you're coming from next someone said uh towers the one okay i mean there still doesn't resolve it you know clues like i said they're stepping away from tower troubles the only deck that plays two towers is tower turbo any other clear deck plays one so that would resolve nothing disc i don't know what saltiness with disc is personally i'm not even the biggest fan of disc i mean i guess it's for the otk potential but you know i'm not even really pointing the finger that at, at that either so no this gets fine you know this is not even close to being one stronger cle please you know i would i'm surprised that you didn't point a figure at stealth alone disc so no uh, wind up carrier and Zamaiti. Can Zamaiti come back only if you ban fucking Hunter? Like, like uh, everybody who suggested Zamaiti didn't even say anything about Hunter. And I'd say, like I said, at this point, I seriously doubt it. It just doesn't seem like something that TCG wants to do at this car moment. I mean, how, look, look how long it took Black Wings and freaking uh, Glass to get their shit back. You're like, wind ups, you still got a little bit longer before they even think about you. Uh, Cyberstein? No, no. Uh, Cyberstein's a ridiculous Infernoids, you know, that fucking... Uh, additional summon pushing for OTKs. It's, it's an enabler. It's an enabler. Uh, so I'd probably say no. And if they wanted to, they could have bring it back a long time ago. Uh, Heavy Storm. Uh, surprisingly, no. Uh, and the thing with Heavy Storm is, is that the the back row to Heavy Storm ratio is actually kind of missing. Heavy Storm is actually kind of fine right now. It's not bad. <coughs> and the thing with bringing Heavy Storm back is that we can't just bring Heavy Storm and not be valid that back row. I mean, I'm trying to look at it from both both sides. And um, Personally, I would rather have Heavy Storm banned as long as I don't have to deal with all that fucking backer. Yeah, no. OCG has Harpy's Feather Dust. Yeah, but they also have three Torrentals, three Bottomless, and three Capulses. Like, you gotta weigh, you know, the, the negatives with the positives. And fuck that, you know. Because uh, still, uh, yeah, I have one Harpy's Feather Dust, but look at all the background facing, you know. And it's not like it's searchable unless I'm playing Harpy, so no thank you. So, uh, Heavy Storm, I'm sorry. Go ahead and stay banned. Uh, next, uh, Chaos Emperor and demock with their routers with no confirmed reprint or anything i really can't put my you know finger on it like where why would they unban those cards with no confirmed reprint like that's dumb like no i'm sorry yeah next moving on semi-limited this video is of course going to go on for a lot longer than anticipated but hey you know i gotta talk about everything uh so we got a couple liberal cards dandelion i don't care dandelion can go fuck up like like, ooh, it sent summons tokens. No, the Synchro mechanic is arguably the weakest mechanic in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, and that's literally that's all it's gonna enable. No one cares, you know. It's another card that just got hit in the uh, Synchro Plant era, and it's just another one of those cards that just hasn't moved. You know, Lone Fire moved, and Go Up Bob moved, and Spore moved, but don't, Dandelion is still at one, so, you know, fuck it. I would, personally, I would go ahead. If I was Konami, I would move Dandelion to two, and probably to three. Like, fuck it. You can have the two token. You know, if fucking Scapegoat can move up, Dandelion can move up. Enough said. Uh, Grand Mole. 
See, the problem with Grand Mole is that it goes up and down with goodness, and you, you gotta admit, it's a walking compulse that can be reused over and over and over again. And to increase the consistency of Grand Mole just doesn't seem healthy, you know? Uh, and depending on what deck is popular at the time and what decks are trying to promote, Grand Mole goes up and down with how good it is, similar to Compulse. So uh, I'm literally put Grand Mole in the same boat, you know? I don't want to increase the consistency of Compulse, I don't want to increase the consistency of Grand Mole. And while it may not be played, you don't want to take that risk. <laughs> Uh, Alert Darkness. I actually sat down and I thought about it, and I was like, you know what, Alert Darkness isn't that really that bad of a card. It just happened to be that at times, dark decks are good, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing Alert Bob to two. Yeah. You know? Uh, I mean, Dad, Dad, you need to stay where you're at, you know, because Dad and Alert and all that in the same boat, but Alert, I mean, it's a fair card. It's literally even out, you're banishing the dark monster, uh, and when you can have shit like Trade In and, you know, and Sacred Sword and all that shit be up, I don't see why Alert can't be as well. So, uh, it's just that, you know, when you really look at it, it's like, oh, Burning Abyss are good, and, you know, Stalls are good, but if we can go ahead and address those cards, then, yeah. Gold Sark, no. Gold Sark needs to stay at one. The problem with Gold Sark, and I know, like, oh, well, it's really good in card. The problem with it is that it's an enabler for any search card where you literally even out with a two-turn wait to get any card. Uh, it's gone up and down and up and down, and the reason why I got hit to Dragon Rose, but when you really sit down and think about it, it's still a healthy, unhealthy card, you know? Like, you thought it, it was bad that you can go ahead and go, you know, Law of Chain, set up your graveyard, how about I get any cards, Monster Spell or Trap, in my hand, even out, in two turns. I can wait, I can wait, you know? So, definitely, Gold Star deserves his spot at, uh, one. Uh, Monster, uh, Monster Gate up to two. I doubt it. You know, at this point, it just doesn't seem what Konami really cares about Infernoids or anything along those lines. And you're just like, you know what? Monster Gate uh, is literally another enabler for uh, more stackish plays, such as, you know, uh, being able to tribute any monster and grab any monster. So I see where they're coming from, you know, and while it's an egg, it's, an, it's still an enabler. So I wouldn't be surprised if Monster Gate still remains at one, despite it being, you know, more liberal over an OCG lane. Uh, Roted 2 2. No, no, Rotor's probably going to stay at 3. Uh, uh, Compulsive 2. Uh, I'm assuming that the person who said this was the same person who went with Heavy Storm. Like I said, see, there's the repercussion. I'd, like I said, I'd rather have Heavy Storm, bam, Compulsive at 1, Bombus at 1, Torrental 1, because they're all worthy of being at 1. And if I have to have no Heavy Storm to trade in for all those cards that definitely deserve their spot at 1, then let's so be it. Uh, someone said Sacrifice to 2. Like I said, I would not mind if Scout went down to 1. As long as Sacrifice went down up to two, because it would change Cleez a little bit, and it would actually step away from the Tower Turbo, because Tower Turbo does not play Sacrifice. It's too slow, and it's not worth the time. So, uh, there we go. There, that would literally be the end of Tower Turbo, because it would not be, it would be inconsistent and worth, not worth the effort. So you would still see Cleez, in which case, Cleez have not really been the problem. They're not even one of the top decks. Uh, they occasionally top as just an anti-meta deck, but Cleez have not been, you know, as problems as they were in the past. And... Was that after they dropped off out of that Tower Turbo fave, it's basically with Diamond Crab King, they really haven't done much, you know. It's literally just been a really aggressive format of, you know, Necros and Shadals and uh, Cosmos and Infernoids, uh, occasional be uh, Burning Abyss, but uh, to take it to that extreme uh, where, you you know, you're just absolutely trying to kill Cleaves right now, it's not necessary. So, like I said, summer, uh, Sacrifice to 2, Scout down to 1, and, like, lose one turn to, like, two, because they've they've been sort of turning into, like, <coughs> uh, a kind of a, a anti-meta deck by rank three, but, meh, you know, I've been, Imperial Iron Walls in the same boat, like, they, we got some kind of, so we got some trap cards, we got some trap cards that are floodgates, so. Uh, next, Graph. Graph, I, I, I can see it, someone's a burning this monster from the deck. Uh, the, generally, the consensus that everybody's agreeing on is Sir, Graph, Dante. Uh, personally, I would probably maybe keep, I'd probably, I mean, Sir, Sir and Lucid Dante. I'd probably go ahead and put Sir down to one, Mathematician down to one. I'd probably keep Graph at three, personally. I'd probably keep, creep, get, creep, creep, gra keep Graph at three. <coughs> because with one Sir, I mean, what are you summoning from the deck? You know, you're really putting your finger on Graph because Graph summons Sir. So Sir is, no. Nah. So, I'd probably keep Graph too, and maybe, maybe do something with Dante. Like I said, it's kind of hard to hit Dante so early when, you know, they haven't done much uh, Burning Miss hit. Personally, I would probably just go Sir to 1 and uh, Mathematician 1 and leave it like that. So, yeah, there's my opinion on that. Uh, God, we are, still have a lot more to go. <coughs> uh, Dante too. I already talked about that. You know, I'd probably show up, uh, you know, I'd go ahead and see Sir and Mathematician at 1, see where that goes. Uh, especially when it comes to uh, TCG involvement, and if need be, we can go ahead and hit Graph and Dante down to two as well. I'm like the next upcoming list. Uh, Valk. 
I've never been a big hater of that. I mean, you know, it's kind of like a Swiss scarecrow. Ooh, and you tribute to draw. I mean, you're zeroing out. You know, and besides being a 28 beater, I mean, I really don't see the hate on Valk. Besides the fact that he's blocking your attacks, who cares? You know, with an aggressive ass deck like Necros, where they don't really claim back row, what's wrong with them having an attack blocker? Nothing. You know, like I said, it doesn't. It's not an enabler when it comes to consistency. It really doesn't bring anything new to the table besides just being a blocker and a tributer. So you want to open out and tribute your cards, draw cards, whatever. You know, you want to, you know, it's not like you're just drawing off and drawing. You want to block attacks, whatever. But what you need to do when it comes to Necros, obviously, is hit their consistency. And Falk doesn't do that. So I wouldn't mind Falk stayed at three. <coughs> uh, Lose one turn, I already talked about that. Towers, someone said Towers to two. I don't know why. Like, you know, that does nothing. That literally does nothing. No one plays their Towers. Waving eyes, waving eyes because I had three. The breach dragon. That's that's an interesting one. Uh, it seems like slowly Konami's been stepping back away from the dragon wars. You know, whether it be slowly giving you back your dragon's vein, and if there's anything that they want to go ahead and move on next, it would definitely be the breach dragon. You know, the breach dragon went down to one because you know dragon wars and stuff like that. And at this point, it really hasn't done much. You know, I just, like I said, synchro mechanics probably unarguably the weakest mechanic, and the breach dragon is not really gonna help make that any better. So. Uh, you know, I would not be uh, remiss or upset if the British Dragon went up back up to two to where it was at before. All right, moving on, Hornet. Uh, Hornet is fine at two. Uh, do I see Konami moving to two? I mean, at this point, maybe. I mean, they didn't move it for Worlds, but I guess they didn't want to because I guess they didn't want to see Insectors at Worlds. So maybe since Worlds is done, they might move it up to two. But Book of Fate is probably in the same boat. Yeah. Could you have three? I mean, could you have two Fate? Yeah, probably. I mean, it's literally the same boat. It's not like you know, spellbooks are going to be good anyway, but, okay. Rescue Rabbit, you're probably in the same boat as well, and, uh, Book of Moon. No. <laughs> no, Book of Moon is just as powerful as Compulse and Bottomless and Trap and Trental in its own way, so definitely Book of Moon deserves to be at one. Uh, alright, on to uh, the unlimited cards, going to three. Dark Hole, only for Geki gets, uh, banned. Uh, Tragodia, yeah, Trago Tra can go, probably go up to three. No one's going to play it anyway. Uh, Card Trooper, nah, that's another enabler that they probably don't want to go ahead and move. Uh, Chaos Sorcerer, same thing, you know, the whole BLS Chaos Sorcerer ratio has been fine, it hasn't had any problems, so they'll probably just go ahead and keep it. If they tried Chaos Sorcerer at 3 multiple times, and then just end up putting it back down to 2, so they're probably like, no, nah, that's fine. Hornet to 3, uh, I'm not sure if it, uh, it seems like, uh, TG's more kind of slow with it, I mean, unless they're going to put it in the same boat as, like, with Mermels and stuff like that, but, uh, you know, it is a deck that won worlds, and when it comes to decks that win worlds, they kind of just kind of take it slow and slowly give you your cards back. So I wouldn't be surprised if Hornet goes with two and then three. Like, anybody's going to really play deck just like that. Advanced Social Art, mm, I mean, Advanced Social Art has literally been at two for such a long time that Konami probably forgot about it. I doubt it will move. I'll be surprised. Charter Lab Brigade, probably not. They're probably happy with that ratio right now. They don't want to put charge up to three and, you know, Create light swans again, essentially. Ceasefire, no, it's fine. It, it really, it's truly a one, but it didn't really do much at two, but it's still arguably the most powerful burden card in Yu Gi Oh! So, no. Uh, Gear Gear Gear, I mean, you could probably try it at two, but at this point, it's probably going to be a little while before they start moving things with Gear Gear, especially with that uh, quick play spell card. Like, nah. Uh, Shion Shion could probably go up to three as long as there's no gateway. I'm totally. Uh, fine with that, as long as there's no gateway, you know, you want to go Xi'an, Xi'an, as long as you don't Xi'an, Xi'an, Xi'an me first turn, then, mm, but, eh. Uh, Dragon's Vein, yeah, that'll probably go up to three, I wouldn't be surprised at that, and Honest, no, 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 no. Uh, they put Honest up to three because there's really no, o, you know, light deck in OCG to really take advantage of it that's popular at the current moment. We have Cosmos, so, no, and no amount of money is worth that, so. Uh, alright, done. It only took way longer than I thought it would be, but I am finally done. So, of course, I'm going to be putting up my banlist prediction, uh, sometime tomorrow. Yeah, sometime tomorrow on Saturday. Usually I'll upload on Saturday, but sure, you know, wrap it up. You get my banlist prediction, and you get the finale of League. So, you know, two for one special before I go ahead and take my break. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Sorry, sorry I kept you guys here and yacked your off, but you know what? At least I didn't take multiple parts. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, any other things, if I need to, I'll go ahead and reply to them by commenting. And I will have my balance up, prediction up by tomorrow. Alright people, thanks for watching.